Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have a interceptor at my backdrop and it is not a stock interceptor. I'll let you know why. But on this interceptor today, we're going to be installing a rec fairing from Autolog Design. So do watch the video right till the end if you're going to be following the same installation instructions so that you have a close to perfect installation. Now pricing for the kit will be shared via Autolog website and which I will leave it in the video description. So this is a Interceptor 650 modified already by the customer with Continental GT handlebars okay to that we are going to be installing the rec fairing which i'll show you in some time what the fairing is now it is almost 95% uh, of perfect installation uh, except for a few additional gaps that i will show in the end of the video uh, that will be visible on this bike which this particular customer is already all right with so if you have a interceptor and you have modified your handles with clip-ons then you can go for this rec fairing now this is mukul's continental gt it is uh, gt650 it is undergoing some changes right now and you will soon hear about them about this bike on his channel unfortunately by the time bike will get ready i'm not here so i won't be able to take clips once i'm back uh, i'll take a proper clip and share it also on my channel Otherwise, this will be available on Autolog Design Instagram or YouTube. Now, this is a GT tank. Uh, notice the slope out here. It is kind of boxy and not uh, completely square or not completely oval. But this slope is what we have to keep in mind. Uh, is what you know the difference is between the two tanks of Continental and the uh, Interceptor. Tank out here in the Interceptor is completely ovular or like a classic 500 or a classic 300 I mean the 350 it is you know like a ball shape over here or a balloon shape over here or a or an ovular shape here unlike the GT1 which is you know having a slant so this is going to be a hindrance in the installation but I'll show you how it still gets installed so to start the installation you have to dismantle the headlight completely and also the indicators on both the sides this particular customer has installed aftermarket indicators and fog lamps and all and the wiring is not at all in socket system so I won't be able to show you what wires to dismantle and what wires to join but uh, even if you also have done any such modifications on your bike remember what you are taking off maybe take photographs or videos and then while assembling maybe uh, and while assembling you have to make sure that you are assembling in the same format once you have removed the headlight and the headlight dome and everything and your indicators are loosened them out then loosen this loosen both the handles and you have to take them down okay loosen this bolt and loosen this indicator stem also and take it down you'll have to remove the handle completely because you need to remove the indicator stays okay they are no more required in this installation like I showed earlier, you need to loosen the indicator stays and then they can slide out once you have taken the meter off. Meter will go back and the clip-ons will go back. This clip-on then goes back and you put the other side clip-on also. Don't tighten it for now, but you can just put it at its place. Once the clip-on is back, put the speedo along with the T back. I mean the 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 your shock observer top plate back once you've put the T I mean T top back and the T plate back and the handlebars back tighten everything and fix everything okay and it has to be in the same position as it is shown right now in the video handlebar should be at the same position not above it should be absolutely below the T once the handlebar and T and everything is installed remove the number plate mount because we don't need that anymore fairing is going to be coming there Next, you have to remove the side panel because you need to you need access to pull that cable so that your seat can be removed. Why you need to remove the seat? You need to remove the seat because you need to access to that uh, two bolts for the tank. We need to remove the tank because we have to install two brackets from front. Bike has completely been dismantled. Uh, your uh, fuel tank, everything has been taken off. There are two handlebar holders over here. Okay, 
this also needs to be taken out okay they are over here which needs to be taken out when you loosen the teeth that time you can take these off these are all the parts that are going to come in your kit one is going to be the fairing visor the main bracket or the main um, assembly point for your uh, fairing and then subordinate brackets 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so so two of these parts and five metal parts 1 2 3 4 5 yes and of course nuts and bolts for the background noises i really can't help it because i am at the workshop now you also need to install these brackets uh, irfan is installing the bracket of course there will be a detailed installation video also on autolog website with uh, not autolog website but uh, when you once you purchase the kit uh, the autolog team will send you the installation video which vikas right now is shooting so this bracket comes from this side and you have to mount on two nut bolts over here same will happen to the other side bracket remove this cable holder from this side okay remove this one before you install the left hand side bracket let it loose okay after you remove it let it loose you don't have to install it anywhere and then install the second bracket on the right hand side this is how the bracket slides in and then you have to put nut and bolts there are already two holes in the chassis on which the bracket sits okay you don't have to drill any hole you don't have to mount anything else just this bracket slides in from the front both the bracket slide in from the front and they get locked in the nuts and bolt this is how the bracket gets locked with the help of lock nuts on the back side same on the other side once you put the bracket in place and this two bolts in place don't tighten these hold on before you tighten those put all these four bolts and nuts over here okay there are four holes over here put four nuts four bolts on from both the sides and tighten these completely these should be holding each other completely tight okay there should be no movement between these two but this you have to keep loose okay even this one you have to keep loose if you see the bracket is moving up and down right now because that movement that free play you will require to adjust the complete uh, fairing next we are going to put the c shape bracket inside the current one and this is how it sits the collar part should be on the top okay and will be hold matching on both the sides through which nuts and bolts will go from both the sides this particular c bracket has got self locking threads inside it so you just have to pass the bolt from both the sides okay and tighten this one also completely don't leave this one loose this c bracket will prevent the uh, the complete fairing bracket no you know it will prevent it from moving left and right next we going to headlamp install the headlamp dome back on the brackets that autolock provides and you'll have to use your two bolts one on this side and another one on this side this is the second bolt next uh, we going to install you know you got to you got to put all your wiring back inside the headlight dome okay once that is then done then you can proceed with the rest of installation like the frame and all that means to be installed you could you could continue only after putting all the wires inside the dome so <laughs> these are the uh, indicator sockets which you have to keep them outside you don't have to put it inside the dome because indicators are now going to be installed on the uh, fairing at the bottom side which will sh which we will show you at towards the end certain sockets which will not go inside Uh, especially of the speedometer so that you'll have to keep outside because in case of uh, interceptor the speedo you know uh, speedo and the headlamp is very close usually in stock bike so all the wires they are of short length now we are extending the headlight outside so that much there is short wires uh, and because of that you'll have to keep the these wires these sockets outside these belong to the socket uh, to the to the speedo and to your uh, uh, switch gear of the other side and you guys are seeing all this red tape and all because uh, this particular customer has fog lamps and all installed and all the wiring has been taken from inside 
so that's why you see additional color but it won't be there in your case you will have stock wirings so this is the speedo socket that i was talking about that you need to keep outside and this is the main switch socket your key switch socket that you need to keep inside which cannot go inside because the length is less if you try to push inside when you turn the handle left and right it will get cut in this uh, brackets and all so don't try to put this inside forcefully next we're going to be installing this cross bracket below your uh, above your oil cooler above your oil radiator and it's going to be below the fork t which i'll show you in some time so you need to loosen you need to loosen the bracket bolts which are there just above the radiator okay this one both the bolts loosen them out and put this bracket in okay like this okay let me show it to you from here if it is visible okay the coincide with the original stock holes and put in the bolts these are the two small bolts that came out from this location and autolog will give longer bolts so you install with longer bolts this is how it looks on the right hand side and this is how it looks on the left hand side here your indicators will come and all this is going to be used for mounting the fairing and the fairing bracket so one tricky part in this installation now once you finished installing the headlamp putting all the wires inside and all now it's the time to tighten the rear four bolts two on right and two on left but before you tighten you have to make sure the bottom line of the auto lock bracket okay is horizontal okay is in the same line is on the same uh, vertical same horizontal line of the cone set line this is your cone set part the outer part of your cone set of the chassis okay so this line you see and the auto lock bracket line bottom line they should be aligned uh, horizontally both in same line and then tighten it do not let the bracket sit on that cone set because otherwise in future it will start making noise when you go over potholes and all leave like 1 or 2 mm gap if you can see there's a gap between the two after the bracket bolts have been tightened you have to put the tank back make sure when you're putting the tank back you put all the sockets and uh, the petrol pipes and everything back perfectly and then bolt on the tank your work below the tank is complete once everything is installed for your tank and all next is this frame that is going to hold the main fairing so this frame you have to do nothing but just come and slide it from the front okay and auto lock has given slots over here on this bracket as well as this bracket so put your nuts and bolts over here okay do not tighten it completely you have to keep it uh, free uh, they've given slots so that you can adjust the frame you can push it ahead and behind just in case you know some alignment is not matching so don't tighten this bolts right from the beginning okay keep them loose just put them in place both left and right don't tighten them and in due course if you need to loosen this this bracket from bottom that you installed earlier then you can loosen it for time being so that this holes match helping irfan to install so i couldn't take the clip so next what you have to do is you have to take the complete fairing and like you slid down the frame you have to also you know slide the fairing inside and start putting the bolts at the back side which is over here so once the headlamp fairing is in place align the outer diameter of the headlamp fairing i mean the headlamp dome the chrome part and the inner diameter of the fairing and then simultaneously put the bolts out here you have to put uh, one by one two bolts over here and one by one two bolts on this side so once all your alignment and all is done you tighten the back bolts at the end okay don't tighten before that once that is done then align these holes at the top okay at the top side for the uh, visor and the fairing and the bracket at the back side okay like this one is already done okay then start putting these screws uh, the bolts for the fairing bottom side on both the sides okay here too and there's a nut behind that you need to tighten 
which I'll show you in some time once the uh, once Irfan finishes all the tightening part, then I'll show you which bolt goes where and what you have to tighten. So this nut goes uh, bolt goes in from top over here, and Autolog will provide a nut which will go at the back side, okay, which is this one over here at the top, okay, not the bottom one, not the bottom one, top one. On the other side, put this nut, bolt from top. Put its nut, which will come somewhere around over here at the back side, uh, and then tighten these bolts also, which you had loosened for this bracket adjustment. Okay. Next, we'll install indicators over here, and we'll also install the visor on top. Next, we will install the visor. Now, whatever fairing you get, you will get pre-installed well nuts inside it. You just have to put your visor and three. Bolts from the top, and then we'll put nut and bolt at these two edges. So first, Irfan is installing nuts, uh, sorry, bolts from the top. Remember, well nuts are already there inside when you get the fairing. Even if it is not there, you just have to insert the well nut inside and then tighten the bolt from top side. Same way for the front section. Now you have to put the Bolt from top and well nut from bottom and tighten it. Don't tighten it completely unless the second one is also in place first. We'll have to align the frame inside. Okay, the inner frame, the fairing and the visor, and then put the bolt from top and then the well nut from bottom. So finally, all installation, all indicators, and everything is done. Wiring is yet pending because uh, these are not stock indicators. So Irfan has to play around with the wiring a bit. But the work is done, and I'll quickly give you a you know a quick walk around of how the fairing looks from all the sides. I've got very less space here to move around, but you'll at least get some idea. Okay. I did take a small test ride also outside uh, on the rough patch over here, and everything felt enough. I mean, good enough and in place. Nothing was vibrating, nothing was uh, you know rattling or anything. So the installation has come out really well. Uh, with that said, I'll end my vlog here. If you guys have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Of course, I'll leave the fairing kit. Link in the video description. I leave Autolog Design website link in the video description. The Instagram on video description, just in case you want to get in touch with them directly. Of course, remember this is a interceptor and not a Continental, so it's a retrofitting done. This kit is originally made for GT and not interceptor, but this customer specifically wanted it. And you're going to see some additional space over here. Okay. Uh, which is not, or which is comparatively much lesser in a Continental GT. Okay. Apart from that, uh, like I said in the start of the video, that you need to have the clip-ons for sure, because if you have a normal handlebar, then this is not going to get installed for sure. So with that said, I'll end the vlog here. I hope you like the content. If yes, like, share, subscribe. And share the video with your respective riding groups who are in the interceptor and the previous interceptor. Thanks for watching. Love you know. See you on the cross. I got a 40 on my hip and I'm live on the spark. Throw down these hits. My click is indivisible. I aim you duck. I squeeze. Now you invisible. I'm not afraid of getting physical. All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals. Bloods on my hands. Got slugs on my gunners. Yeah, we notorious. We ain't no runners. Bloods on my hands. Slugs on my gunners. Yeah, we some warriors. They ain't come on us. Bloods on my hands. Got slugs on my gunners. Bloods on my hands. Got slugs on my gunners.